Republican Speaker of the House Mike Johnson is releasing more January 6th footage, but with a catch. Some of those who were at the Capitol that day will have their faces blurred in order to protect them from retribution from the Justice Department. Here's Johnson explaining his logic. Their own conclusions. We should not, they should not be dictated by some narrative and accept that as fact. So they can review the tapes themselves. Uh, we're going through a methodical process of releasing them as quickly as we can. As you know, we have to blur some of the faces of persons who uh, participated in, in, uh, in the events of that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and, uh, and, and, and to be charged by the DOJ and, and to have other, uh, you know, concerns and problems. So uh, that's a slow process to get it done. We're working steadily on it. We've hired additional personnel to do that. And uh, all of those tapes ultimately at the end will, will be out so everybody can see them and draw their own conclusions. But apparently that wasn't quite right. According to Johnson spokesman Raj Shah, faces are to be blurred from public viewing room footage to prevent all forms of retaliation against private citizens from any non-governmental actors. The Department of Justice already has access to raw footage from January 6, 2021. As of this moment, just 90 hours of J6 footage has been made public by Johnson. So I, I think he gave people the wrong impression here. Um, so the Department of Justice already has been able to view all all this footage. So releasing it to the public, and if they didn't blur the faces, it wouldn't be like the government would suddenly go, oh, we didn't talk to that guy or we didn't arrest that person. They've already gone through all of it. So really what they're trying to prevent is, I think, people getting fired or doxxed if, the, if, if now it's seen that you were at the Capitol, you know, suffering some kind of actually non-governmental consequence because the government already has all the evidence and all the footage to make you suffer whatever consequences they want. So given that, um, I, I think the blurred faces is reasonable. Um, I, now, obviously, I don't know that these people, people who entered the cap, you know, public grounds that have videotapes, that they necessarily have the right to not have that released. Um, and I'm all for more transparency. I think it is important for people, for journalists, for independent commentators to view this footage to get a sense of what really happened, given that like our entire next presidential election might hinge on it, hinge on the actions taken that day, how severe they were, who encouraged them to do it. Um, that kind of thing. I it's, mean, it Liz, Liz Cheney said it's very important and it's driving her entire uh, political trajectory. At this her point. possible presidential <laughs> campaign hinges right. on it. So, and, uh, you know, and I don't trust, we, we don't and shouldn't just trust the government or law enforcement's sure. narrative about it. Um, there is there's no doubt, I witnessed it with my own eyes, that there was smashing and f windows fighting with police officers, property being defaced. There are charges there that I think are perfectly legitimate. It's also the case that we've seen people just kind of walking down the hallways um, with the police, mm -hmm. not fighting with them. Some of the people there probably had no expectation that they were necessarily doing something wrong. And we know that people have been charged, have gotten like 20 year sentences for organizing a mass terrorist event based on what happened there. So it's important to see the footage. That, you might argue it's important also you know, to see the non-blurred images. Um, so I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, I'm a little bit mixed on this. First, first Robbie, it's so funny. Were you at one, where were you on January 6th? It's become such a, like a joke punchline <laughs> that every time you say, well, I was there, I saw it with my own eyes, it's a part of me. <laughs> because, <laughs> Robbie, was, I, I had the horns on and I, had the, I was outside the Capitol grounds covering it. I lived I know, near I there. Know. I decided to venture over. Yes, as, as in your professional capacity, you were there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm mixed on this. Look, I see a lot of liberals. For example, I see um, uh, Ron Filipowski. He's a big uh, online Twitter guy. He's an editor-in-chief at MidasTouch.com, uh, tweeting the implication that, you know, quote, Johnson has to blur their faces because he knows they're all MAGA and wants to keep them from getting arrested. The implication broadly is, you know, you know, you guys know that you behaved wrongly. You know that you behaved illegally, or else why would you be covering up faces? Um if you weren't guilty, what is there to hide kind of a narrative, which generally speaking, I don't subscribe to. People have rights to privacy, et cetera, outside of kind of this very strict criminal legal context. I do think optically, it, it looks bad. Um, I, the I, whole point of releasing additional uh, footage is because conservatives believe it's exculpatory in some ways. And I think some of the uh, imagery we've already seen where the cops were escorting people down the hallway certainly does point to that. But to want something to have that sort of evidentiary value to the public, but to not want to fully disclose every aspect of it does feel like a kind of cherry picking that cuts at the root of what you're trying to do here with this disclosure project. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, you know, in my career and capacity as a journalist, um, often writing about 
activists and things happening on college campuses, um, at the beginning, I was all about, you know, I'm, I, yes, let's be transparent. People are saying things. People are engaged in activities that I'm criticizing. I'm going to let you know who these people are. And then what would happen in some cases, you know, I, you know, refer to the, the student activist group leader who's, you know, calling for the speaker to be shut down or is actually, you know, harassing the speaker, trying to get it shut down, throwing things, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. so shutting off the light switches. Um, I'd call them out by name in an article, um, you know, accurate, quoting them accurately. Sometimes I was there covering it, witnessing it. Then there would be, you know, a kind of cancel culture mob against that person. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I was trying to call them out because what, what I think they did is, is bad and is of public interest and happened in public. Mm -hmm. But I didn't necessarily want their whole life to be destroyed over it. Mm -hmm. So then sometimes when I was covered, so then over time I started actually redacting people's names, even when I was criticizing them, even when I thought what they did was very blameworthy because I didn't want to be furthering the very problem I was trying to, to, to yeah, grapple it's, with. Yeah, it's tough, it's hard. I do think that the, the, the less public the figure is, yeah. the more justification there is to do something yeah. like blurry And a lot spaces. of these are just random people. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Right. I get that argument. I, I am very, I'm mixed on this one, I gotta yeah. say. Optically, I think it looks bad for conservatives because what they're trying to say is I'm transparent and look what was hidden from you. So that I, I, I'm pretty firm on. In terms of kind of ethically, what is their responsibility? You know, I, I also understand that perspective as well. I think this is part of what what someone might say as a response, well, let's watch these videos privately. Why do we have to have these in the public forum as well? But then you have this, you've got this trade-off. Um, and how much more evidentiary value is there going to be in additional videos that are being released? We now know, I mean, I think we always knew, I, I, you know, we always knew that the cops played some role. There were immediate allegations from the left that cops facilitated 1-6, and that was part of the frustrating, fr frustration from the left that the elected progressives voted for more uh, capital police funding in the wake of 1-6. So this, that's not exactly new either, but I understand that a lot of people apparently didn't see that. They didn't watch the 1-6 hearings, whatever, um, and they found that to be useful for Republicans to disclose. And maybe there's some more stuff like that, fine. But you are going to have to contend with the backlash of what the implications are of blurring people's faces. If I were doing a story, let's say, on something that I do kind of substantively support, which is, um, you know, pro-Palestine protest, and I chose footage where I selected, you know, was blurring out the faces of the people in the protest, what would that look like from my perspective, as opposed to picking a crowd shot mm -hmm. or picking a shot that had um, a leader of the group who was speaking in front of the crowd who has already put themselves forward as a, a vaguely public figure? I don't know. I'd have to wrestle with that. When I've covered um, left-wing protests that have had some... Uh, criminality component where, you know, storefront windows get smashed or something. It's happened in D.C., Black Lives Matter um, type stuff during the pandemic. Um, most of those people did, they would sh cloak their face. Yeah. They would cover I mean, their faces and yeah. they would have uh, black umbrellas. To yeah. try, you know, they knew you were media following them around. And they had umbrellas stuck in my face a couple times. So mm -hmm. They understand the value of keeping, of not even needing your face to be blurred. Yeah. Um, which is something that people that went into the Capitol, although I, maybe some, some right-wing people do um, also, I mean, the very right, the you know, right wing um, kind of alt right people. When they've done demonstrations, sometimes they do shield their whole faces too. That reminds me of a story that perhaps we should cover, where they're trying to ban the wearing of face masks in Atlanta. And I'd be very interested to hear what your libertarian take ban is on that Ban them for COVID one. reasons, but not for, no, not ban them. Just don't require them. Just joking. Exactly. It just shouldn't be required, not banned. More rising right after this.